Hi, welcome to Finland. Today uh, is my first actual university showcase. So today we'll be going over the Lut Universities group as a university organization. Uh, as a disclaimer, I am a student of Lut University, although I try to be as unbiased as possible when I make videos about universities in Finland, because the reason why I'm doing this is I just want to give more resources to any kind of students in Finland and anyone who wants to come study and, and work and live in Finland. Uh, so the reason why I specifically chose this university uh, is also because it's not in Helsinki and it's not in some of the larger cities. And I think a lot of the students uh, kind of miss a lot of the smaller universities uh, in Finland because they focus on the bigger universities, which is understandable. But I want to also make, you know, a showcase of universities and saying, hey, there's actually other options as well. And some of these options are actually really nice. This is the uh, Lappeenranta campus of Lut University and Lab University of Applied Sciences. So what is Lut Universities? I have my nice little uh, graph here uh, of post-secondary education that I yoinked for my previous video, where basically in Finland you have universities, or yliopisto, and universities of applied sciences, or ammattikorkeakoulu. So the difference between these two would be that universities are the your traditional theoretical and academic institutions of higher education, which means that they uh, are you know more likely to be recognized outside of Finland as you know your theoretical university degree. You can do a master's degree outside of Finland with uh, a bachelor's degree from here. But generally for employment in Finland, you are doing a five-year degree in, in university. So three-year bachelor's and two-year master's. Uh, so this is in contrast to University of Applied Sciences. University of Applied Sciences is much more work-oriented. It's less theoretical and it's less academic. You will have more practical uh, courses and you will have more laboratory courses and things like that where you actually do hands-on things, but what in your degree is usually between a three and a half year to a four year uh, bachelor's. Uh, so you, there are also some opportunities for masters, but uh, overall, these are more practical degrees. Universities can uh, give you bachelor, master and licentiate and doctorate level studies, whereas universities of applied sciences can only go up to a master's and it's still a different master's from, uh, from university uh, because it is more practical. So the reason why I bring this up is because the Lut Universities Group, uh, which is a legal uh, entity, is made up of one university, Iliopisto, so Lut Iliopisto, and one University of Applied Sciences, Amattikorkeakoulu, so Lab Amattikorkeakoulu. Uh, overall, there's 7,110 students from Lut. This seems very specific. I got it from the Lut website. Uh, I don't know if it's actually, it's probably something different from this because this is way too specific. And then uh, there's about 9,500 students from lab. And overall, there's about 16,500 students in this university group. Uh, so we have campuses in cities of Lappeenranta and Lahti, and then also research units in Kouvola and Mikkeli. And then there's also some online studies from Lab University of Applied Sciences. And the overall group was established in 2019 through, through a merger of three higher education schools, so Lappeenranta University of Technology, Lahti University of Applied Sciences, and Saima University of Applied Sciences all merged to create uh, this new entity with these two schools. And overall, there's uh, 120 million euros in funding from LUT and 51 million uh, euros in funding from LAB. This is 2021 numbers, so I'm, I believe they're higher now. But overall, just to get the idea across, you know, these two schools together have uh, 170 million euros in funding. I believe if you count other kinds of investments that the university have, the number is over 200 million. Uh, but the reason why I bring this up is just saying like, hey, this school overall uh, has a, quite a bit of funding uh, behind it. And, you know, I think that's a pretty important factor for a lot of international students who are looking at schools and they want to make sure that they are getting education and facilities that are, you know, high, high in quality, basically. So... Also, this university has a large and vocal international student body. So this is one of the most international universities in all of Finland. Uh, they have a massive amount of international programs, uh, going from bachelor's, master's to doctorate level. And generally, you can study engineering at Luther Lab. Luther is more theoretical. Lab is more practical. Social sciences at Luther, and then business at Luther and Lab. Uh, also, the same thing with this. Lab is more practical, and Luther is more theoretical. And then healthcare and so rest of them and arts are all at Lab as well. Uh, this photo right here is a photo of the Vipuri Hall in the Lappeenranta campus of Lut University. This is the largest lecture hall uh, that the university has. So Lut University, or Lut Iliopisto, it was established originally in 1969 as Alte Koko. It's one of the three original universities in Eastern Finland. And it's, uh, so in Eastern Finland you have Lut University, uh, University of Joensu, and University of Kuopio. University of Joensu and University of Kuopio merged in 2010 to become University of Eastern Finland. So that's what you might know them as now. 
Then you got, it's one of the three original engineering universities in Finland. Uh, Lut is uh, LTKOKO. Then the other universities are TKOKO, which is nowadays Aalto University. And then also TTKOKO, which is nowadays Tampere University. And the specific research focuses on sustainable engineering, clean water and air, nuclear and sustainable energy. Uh, it's kind of funny, you can actually go on the La Parada campus and go to some of the research buildings and you can, there will, there's actually signs that are like, hey, beyond these doors, do not open them, there's nuclear research behind it, because they are, Lut is one of the few universities in Finland with a uh, completely like functional and operational nuclear core, uh, or whatever kind of nuclear system that they have going on. I'm not an energy technology major, so I don't know what this is, <laughs> but they have some stuff going on that's very unique. Most of the nuclear, uh, you know, power that is in you know uh, academic academic institutions in Europe and Finland are being decommissioned decommissioned uh, I think to believe the older one the one that Alta University uh, is being decommissioned maybe as well it's from like the 60s um, so we have one of the newer ones luckily so that's pretty cool uh, the campuses are in Lappeenranta and Lahti you can do your bachelor's master's and doctorate uh, there and then also Mikkel and Kouvola have master's and doctorate programs as well and the current university is created in 2019. So that would be Lut University, this most recent logo here. Uh, so you, there's been some a lot of changes with the logo, but basically what happened was that the name was Lappanant University of Technology, or LUT, uh, but we wanted to open a new Lahti campus. So the university opened the Lahti campus, so now it's called Lappanant Lahti University of Technology. Uh, the first one is in Finnish, the second one is in Swedish, and then the first, so third one is in English. And the way that they got around, you know, their uh, issue with their branding and naming is by, in the legal name, putting Lut at the back of the name. And the reason why is that in Finnish law, you are not allowed to call yourself a university unless it's with your legal name. So you are not allowed to use the name Uliopisto legally unless it is in, in the law that you are allowed to use it. So we, you could not say Lut Uliopisto unless in the law, so the, there's this piece of paper that parliament passes of Finnish universities, Unless the law says that Lut is there, you cannot use this name. So Lut was like, okay, we're changing the name to Lappeenranta Lahti to get two campuses. But this ruins the Lut thing, and it makes it way too long and confusing. And nobody knows how to say Lappeenranta unless you're from Finland. So let's just, you know, put Lut at the end of the name, and now we call it Lut University. And that was probably the most genius thing I've ever seen. Like, it's so stupid when you think about, like, the context of it, because the, the grammar doesn't make sense at all. Like, this would be Lappeenranta University of Technology University. But in the context where this is just an abri this is like a descriptive name at the end of the name, then it makes sense. And they got around like the thing of they didn't have to, they, did, they had to rebrand nothing, but they could still also add the new campus into the legal name. And it was just, that was some like legal stuff that I, I bet the, you know, university lawyers were looking through being like, okay, how can we call ourselves Lut University? Uh, well, <laughs> again, it's one of the most international universities in Finland. And also the happiest students in all of Finland. So uh, multiple years in a row, Rona Lut has had the happiest uh, students in Finland, which is kind of funny. It's, you know, the happiest students in the happiest country, if that makes sense. There are several double degree international programs. So with, for example, Hebei University of Technology, there's a lot of bachelor's programs that are double degree. So you can get a Chinese diploma as well as a Finnish diploma. Then there's also a lot of uh, double degree programs with other European universities at the master's level. So you can get, you know, triple degree programs with the software engineering masters and things like that. And there's about 6,000 students in the Lappeenranta campus and 1,000 students in Lahti. The Lappeenranta campus is more influential when it comes to LUT. Uh, the Lahti campus was open in 2019, so it is a little bit newer. So there will be less students there, but it is very rapidly growing. You know, this number was basically nothing just a couple of years ago, and now it's over 1,000 students. So the rankings for LUT and its cost, uh, I'm not going to, you know, go through every each one of these uh, because it's a lot of rambling and none of it really matters because rankings are not that important <laughs> when it comes to your actual ed education uh, because rankings can be gamed uh, very easily. Uh, I guess I'll point this one out, uh, research quality score. This is a really great way to indicate whether you're gaming the system or not because ranking input, which in also increases ranking, uh, or like research input and output, which uh, increases ranking also uh, is, you know, ch changes over time because you could have a diploma mill university with a lot of research, which basically is just them releasing the same article every single year. And then you have universities where you actually do proper research and you release, you know, actual meaningful research in your specific field. 
So the research quality score for Lutz is 91.7 out of 100. So I think that's a pretty good score because it's actually research that's not just a diploma mill, <laughs> which is pretty nice. Um, as for uh, payments and tuition and cost, uh, if you're a European Union citizen, so anyone in the European Union or European economic area, so Norway or Switzerland, you're uh, actually exempt from paying any tuition payments. So it's completely free. This is the like European, like Finnish university system where it's completely free for any European Union citizen because if something is free for Finnish students, uh, it has to be free for European Union students. That's the EU law in a sense. You have to have it because EU citizens are equal in the eyes of the law to Finnish students. So that's why it's free for all European Union citizens, not just Finnish students. And the bachelor base cost for those who are outside of the European Union and that do have to pay tuition is between 9,000 and 9,500 a year. And then master's base cost is about 13,000 to 14,000 a year. Uh, there are partial 50% and full scholarships as well as early bird discounts. So these are something that to look out for if you know the cost is an issue. I would say the cost is very comparable to most you know, European Union and Northern European countries. It's very standardized in Europe. Um, you will find that somewhere in, in, like in the United States, the number is significantly higher. So personally, I'm from the United States. So seeing 9,000 a year felt like incredibly cheap because the other options in the US were like between 40,000 and 80,000 a year. So 9,000 is uh, uh, a lot cheaper than, than 40,000. So I appreciate that at least they're, you know, reasonable cost. And the budget recommendation is between 500 and 1,000 euro a month. I would say 1,000 should be probably the goal here. This would include rent and uh, amenities and also your food. 500 is really low. I like I seen I keep seeing the 500 to 1,000 euro recommendation, and I know you can do 500 euros because I have friends who are doing 500 euros a month. But this is so rough, like because it's so hard to get an apartment for for so cheap, and I, there's some other issues that might come with it. So I would highly recommend going for like 700 and 800 a month. 500 just because it's a recommendation like at least 500 doesn't necessarily mean that you can survive on just 500 it should probably be more <laughs> so lab university of applied sciences or lab amatikorkakolo that was established in 2020 so it's a very new school from the merger of saimia and lamk so saima university of applied sciences and lacht university of applied sciences so these were the original logos before the merger uh, so LUT acquired both Saimia and LAMC in late 2010s before they uh, suspended the operations of both universities and decided to make LAB. So during the merger process and LUT acquisition, they changed the logos to be like similar to each other. So then the brand image after the merger would be you know, recognizable to Finnish students and international students. Um, the lab is the best of both worlds approach. I don't like this slogan, best of both worlds, because it makes no sense unless you know the context. The context is that there's an equal focus on education and also transition into working life because it is a practical school. But if you're an international student, you probably don't really even know that. So you see best of both worlds as their slogan and it's just like, okay, what does that even mean? Uh, just seems like a bunch of like gibberish to sound cool. Uh, but there is a meaning behind it. Uh, it's an applied science bachelor's and master's degree, and they have campuses in Lappar and and also online courses and degrees. I believe they have a bachelor's in sustainable design, for example, that's only in online. And it's one of the largest universities of applied sciences in Finland. I believe it's the sixth largest university of applied science in Finland. And it's particularly known for healthcare and arts. So the Lahti campus, Motolo Instituti, is a very uh, known uh, design program in, in Lapparanta. Uh, sorry, in Lahti. Uh, the city of Lahti has, you know, companies that uh, really have a lot of different kinds of design and art. So the La Lahti University of Applied Sciences, you know, focus on arts is a very natural one, I guess. Um, the Lahti campus of Lutan Lab is located in the Isku Center, which is a furniture design uh, company and their like center uh, that they have. And that's where also the Lahti campus is located. There's 3,500 students in Lapparanta and 6,000 in Lahti. So I would say it's a very similar situation to, uh, to Lut campuses, but it's switched. So instead of it being, you know, 6,000 in Lapparanta and 1,000 in, uh, in, in Lahti, uh, here it's, you know, less students in Lapparanta, more students in Lahti. So it's almost flipped in a sense, uh, although Lapparanta still has quite a few amount of students. But overall, the campus population for Lapparanta, if you put Lut and Lab both together, is about 10,000. And for Lahti, it's also, it's about, you know, seven, 8,000 if you put everyone together, basically, who's there. 
Uh, you have access to all the loot academic resources and resources in campus if you're a student of labs. So you have access to the loot gym, you have access to the prototyping labs, you have access to the uh, different kinds of libraries and things like that. And the reason why I bring this up is because loot is a loot and lab are kind of unique in a sense that generally universities of white sciences get less funding than universities since they're not theoretical universities which also means that their facilities and things like that might not always be the same level as a university. So this changes a lot. So a very large university of applied science like Metropolia will have incredibly modern and incredible campuses like the Zemulumpuro uh, campus or something uh, for Metropolia University of Applied Science, which is beautiful. But a lot of universities of applied sciences struggle with funding. But luckily, lab doesn't have this problem because they're owned by LUT, which means that a lot of the facilities that lab students will use are, you know, high quality and, you know, basically high cost facilities that are paid for by LUT. So you can use the academic library, you can use all these expensive machinery in the prototyping lab, you can have all these things uh, and just because of the fact that it is owned by LUT. So it kind of has this awesome thing where, yeah, you you just have more than other universities of applied sciences in Finland who are not affiliated with universities. So if you want to ch check University of Applied Science out, I would recommend it to be a big University of Applied Science like Metropolia or University of Applied Science that's uh, associated with a university. So Lab or uh, Tampere University of Applied Sciences is, is owned by Tampere University. So something to keep in mind when it comes to universities of applied sciences. So as for lab rankings and cost, applied sciences are not ranked outside Finland or even inside Finland because they specifically exist for, uh, you know, the workforce integration in their specific area of their country. So what that means is that it's very difficult to find rankings, which is probably why you're thinking like, oh, what's the ranking for labs? So I could only find like 80 scientific index uh, where they're ranked 27 in Finland and 2,788 in the world. But it doesn't really make any sense because this list also includes regular universities. So you're putting up universities of applied sciences, which have nothing to do with universities, by the way. Like this is a completely different uh, kind of education system. And you are, you know, comparing them to academic universities. And that, and, you know, I am inherently against that kind of ranking because it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> to anyone who knows more about the universities of applied sciences, you're like, okay, this makes zero sense. But you know, here you go, here's a ranking uh, that I found. I found nothing else that made any sense. Uh, this also doesn't really make any sense, but it is what it is. Um, as for cost, again, you are exempt from any tuition if you are an EU citizen or Finnish citizen. Uh, your bachelor's base cost is 8,000 to 9,000 a year and your master's base cost is 9,000 a year. Uh, so there are partial 50% and early bird discounts available as well uh, in this university. And I would say it's a comparable cost to most EU and Northern European countries as well. Like I said with Loot, it's the same cost basically uh, and the same budget recommendation as well since it's on the same campuses. And this is a photo of the main doors of the Lab University of Applied Sciences Lapparanta campus. So this is the main building. Then there's a sky bridge that goes to the uh, Loot part of the campus. So yeah, about the campus, the Lapparanta campus. <laughs> this is a aerial view of the Lapparanta campus. It's quite large. Um, I would, this specific portion here is the Lut and Lab campus. So there's Lab and then there's Lut and then this is just the campus. But then there's like student housing, uh, just some of the student housing. There's a lot of other stuff. Like there's this goes on way further uh, in, in, in the south, basically. There's a lot more student apartments, but this is just a couple of them and a lot of company campus stuff. So there's restaurants here as well. And there's, you know, the student union house here and a lot of other cool stuff. But overall, this is the campus that you will be most familiar with. You know, you might have, you know, lectures in the lab building. You might have lectures in the Lut building. You might uh, go your internship, do your internship at the, you know, IBH campus here. You might go eat here sometimes and you will be at the student union house doing, you know, movie night or whatever. You can go swim in the Lake Saima. <laughs> so this is the general campus that you, you, you'll you see. And so there's six restaurants on campus uh, there, uh, with varying menus. There's over 10,000 people on this campus. Uh, there's a campus grocery store as well in the student union building. So you can buy your, you know, your basic groceries and amenities for your apartment here if you live on campus. Uh, there's weekly student events and parties to network in, which is very important in Finnish university culture. You need to network to be able to get internships. You need to be network to be able to get help with your CV and your job applications and things like that. So you don't wanna just stay in your room and study. You really do want to go and meet Finnish people and meet European people, especially if you're not from Finland or Europe, 
because they will help you so much. And if you don't have that help, it will be significantly more difficult, especially since you do need to learn Finnish as well to excel in your workplace a lot of the time. Uh, it's located next to Lake Saima. Uh, and also uh, most of Lutz research happens on this campus. Uh, and the majority of the study programs also is, happens on this campus, uh, naturally, since the majority of students are here. And the city overall has a population of 70,000. And this campus is located seven kilometers off from the city center. So the city center is, you know, somewhere over there uh you can also uh live in the city center and take the bus the buses run every 15 15 minutes uh, or 10 to 15 minutes into the Lut, uh campus and overall uh it's a very small city but i think this is the typical finland vibe that you might see online so if you like the you know campus in the forest in the middle of nowhere this might be the really be the vibe that you need and this is a very unique campus because a lot of Finnish universities are in city in large cities and they don't necessarily have this kind of vibe that a lot of people do want like personally I want this vibe and I love this vibe so yeah then there's the Lahti campus it's located in the Lahti industrial district near the city center uh, it's in the e-school center uh, and which is the design uh, center for and then also it has a shared restaurant for students and companies on campus um, there's a lot of frequent student events and parties to networking. There's less of them here because it is not in, they don't have, you know, the typical campus campus area where you can hold events and they also don't have as many students, but there still are so many events. Like usually it's believe, I believe it's also weekly, but it might not be every week. I, that's why I said frequent because I've only been to the Lahti campus once. Uh, it was a very nice campus. I liked it. Uh, but I don't necessarily know the ins and outs of this specific ca campus. Um, there's a large amount of international programs here, so I believe half of the international bachelor's programs, or at least you know two or three of them, are located here on the Lahti campus. Uh, and then there's also, this is a larger city. It's one hour from Helsinki with the train compared to two hours from Lappeenranta, and the city has a population of 120,000. So this will be uh, a lot more like better for, I would guess, job opportunities, but really 70,000, 120,000. It's still a small city. It's nothing like Helsinki with like a million people in the region. Uh, so also, this is also kind of in the middle of nowhere with the forest. This is a kind of a trend with Finland in a way. This might seem also to be in the middle of nowhere, but this is actually like near the city center of Lahti. Finland just is like this. Like Finland just has a lot of forest. Uh, there's a lot of empty space because it's a massive country with a not, not that many people. So even this, to me, when I've lived in Finland and I've gone to the Lahti campus and stuff, and I'm like, okay, this is in the city center. This is like near the, all these buildings. It's not in the forest. But maybe there's someone who's not used to this will look at this and be like, oh my God, there's so much nature around here. But yeah, to me, I just look at this and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a campus in the city center like every other Finnish campus. Uh, I like the Lapparanta one because it's actually in the forest. <laughs> um, but yeah, most of the Lahti campus is lab small portions of loot because there's 1,000 loot students and uh, thousands of lab students. So you would go inside the main doors here and there would be a hallway that's like a lot of loot stuff. But then if you went upstairs and you went through this uh, area here, it's mostly like lab cl classrooms and simulation spaces for healthcare and art students and stuff. But you are free to use those spaces as well because obviously there's integration between lab and loot. It's the same organization. So really there's no difference, but just to you know say like, yeah, a lot of your courses might not be, you know, might be held in a very specific area and you might never even go to like here <laughs> because it's mostly lab simulation stuff. So, yeah, that was my really quick showcase about the universities in, in, in La Peranta and Lahti, the Lut Universities group. Uh, I hope you liked this quick little showcase or I don't know if it's quick. I've been rambling for quite a bit, so maybe this wasn't quick, but I could talk way longer about this because frankly, there's so much that you can talk about with the student culture in, in at Lut University. There's so much you can talk about the courses, the degree programs, the you know general experience of living in Finland. But really, this is just a really quick showcase of like, okay, what are these universities? What's the significance of them? What it's like to, you know, what, what does it cost? And like, realistically, like, what are the chances that you will be studying here? And like, what kind of campuses can you expect to see? So there's so much more. So I would definitely do even more research uh, because, you know, the more research, the better. The more you know about a place, the better. You can make a more educated decision on if something is a good school for you. But overall, uh, thank you for watching this again. Uh, my second video now of rambling about random universities in Finland. Uh, so yeah, thank you.